what are the benefits of going with coax drivers as opposed to separate, you know, tweeter, mid-range, woofer type of scenario, MTM type of thing? So well, why, why did you go with the coax? The timing is the most critical um, part in designing a loudspeaker to make the speaker sound right. And when I'm talking about timing is, of course, timing between the different drivers. And um, you can only manage the timing perfectly if you're not listening in a single sweet spot, but in a multi-seat uh, listening environment like, like in a home theater. When you have a, a coaxial, when you have a point source coaxial driver, which is obvious because it's physics, you know, I mean, when you have a separate tweeter, a separate mid-range, separate woofer, and you move around in the room up or down, you're taller, you're shorter, you're maybe sitting left, uh, not symmetrical to the speakers or to the right, or more towards the back. There is always a little timing difference between the tweeter and the mid-range. And that changes, of course, the, the, the impulse uh, response perception, you know, for your ears uh, in respect to the speaker. And um, that, of course, has um, the effect of certain anomalies because most of the speakers are crossed over between, let's say, 1.5 to 3 kilohertz. And if you put that in perspective to the frequency, you get some certain, you know, um, anomalies, let's say frequency cancellations in that crossover section. Not only that, the, the ear is very sensitive um, in horizontal pain to perceive timing differences. So you can, if you close your eyes, you know, pinpoint to a noise, let's say a cracking or something, um, to one degree exact. So that means if you if you look at it from a timing standpoint, we're looking literally at a few millimeters um, change in the angle. You know uh, when you when you can perceive that, and now um, when you adapt that to uh, let's say a two-way loudspeaker, when you perceive basically the the timing from the mid-range and the timing from the tweeter, and that changes, that. Um, leads in your brain in, and in your perceptual system to certain anomalies, you know, and, and your, your brain gets confused. Of course, your can, brain can certainly correct uh, some of that, but not perfectly. So your brain relaxes much more when you have um, perfect impulse responses uh, from all directions, you know, also from your reflections, for example. The reflections make a lot of... Um, effect uh, to your to our perceptory systems you know when when we listen we listen not only to the direct sound but also to the reflected sound from the floor ceilings walls and so on and when that reflection and impulse response of the reflection and of course the frequency response of the, that reflection is not all in line with a direct sound you know then we 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 feel there is something wrong something odd here and that's the very reason why we decided um, from the beginning when we um, uh, found uh, Ascendo Immersive Audio for home theaters, that was 2013, and we came out with the first loudspeakers 2014. But of course, we have been working on these loudspeaker developments since 2010, and we've been studying line sources, we've been studying multi-driver sources and whatnot. And, um, after a lot of research, um, very deep research, we, we found that point source coaxial loudspeakers are, as a matter of fact, the only way to go in a multi-seat uh, home theater environment to get the per perfect immersiveness um, where the sound, um, the virtual sound, you know, between, between each and every loudspeaker in Dolby Atmos um, object-based systems, you know, you can, you can have a virtual phantom center you know and so the virtual um sound you know can only be created when um all these loudspeakers have the same phase and of course the same impulse response and frequency response and uh, the best way of reproducing that is through a point source coaxial loudspeaker that's why a lot of the companies you know that have let's say different loudspeakers always for the ceiling, try to generate also a, 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 a coaxial or point source loudspeaker. Why is that? 
for that very reason, you know. So if if all the other loudspeaker technologies would work perfectly, you know, then you could also install it in the ceiling, right? But you cannot, and and that's the reason. It it to some people it may be too neutral because it's a very very neutral speaker. But if you're yeah. used um, to to be a mixing engineer, I mean, this is exactly what you're looking for. I mean, you're you don't want the speaker to be a, a, a music instrument. You want uh, basically, the same when you when you drink, um, you know, some wine. You want the glass to be neutral, not the, the glass basically to influence the flavor of the wine, which the glass certainly right. does. You know, so that's why there is a lot of you know uh, glass designers that try to find the the most neutral uh, flavor um, glass. You know, uh, for for a high end wine, and it's the same with a high end loudspeaker. You know, we try to. Uh, create a speaker that has uh, no character on its own, but reproduces the sound uh, as faithful as possible. And uh, these loudspeakers are, as a matter of fact, even we don't call them, you know, uh, but they're they're a perfect studio monitor. Yeah, if you okay. if you measure mm-hmm. them, they have uh, literally almost no resonances. You know, I mean, the break the first breakup mode of the tweeter is. Uh, beyond 21 kilohertz and and all that and you can measure all this of course you know 